Hey guys, I'm very excited because you know what's on my mind today? Biochemistry. Bio, of course, means life. Chemistry, you know what that is. So the chemistry of life. In other words, what makes up life forms? And it's so cool because no matter whether you're a bacterial cell or a human or an elephant or a protist or an alga or a tree or whatever, we're all made of the same basic four compounds of life. I mean, four compounds, yet all this incredible diversity of life. It really makes you think. So what are these four compounds of life? Let's take a look. So here they are, the four compounds that make up all life forms on Earth. We have, some of these will sound familiar to you, carbohydrates. Everybody knows about carbs, right? We love them. They're delicious, unless you're on the Atkins diet. We have proteins, the most diverse molecule of life forms and wait till we get into those you're going to be astounded and nucleic acids like our dna and lipids fats you know a little bit of extra love handles here uh so we're going to go over these four compounds of life specifically we're going to talk about the monomers i.e the building blocks that make them up what their chemical compositions are we're going to get into all that kind of good stuff i can't wait and you might be thinking uh biochemistry trust me once you learn the intricacies 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 of these amazing compounds, you're going to be like, wow. So um, first of all, let's just point out that these four compounds come in the form of what are called polymers. That means um, many building blocks put together to make large macromolecules. So we're going to learn what these building blocks are. And the term for the building blocks are called monomers, right? Mono means one, uh, poly means many. So what are the monomers that make up the polymers? So that's one thing I want you to learn from this lecture are for each of these four compounds of life, what are their monomers? Now, as if that wasn't cool enough that all life is made of just four compounds, these four compounds all share the same basic elements of the periodic table. So you remember that the periodic table of elements has 92 naturally occurring elements plus a bunch that we created ourselves. Yet out of those 92, you remember that, remember chomps? That there's really only a handful that make up the bulk of life on Earth. And so remember CHOMPS was carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So you'll see those same few compounds rearranged in all sorts of magical ways to make these four macromolecules that we call life. So ready? Let's get started. So let's talk a little bit about polymers and how we create polymers and how we break them down. So our cells really don't like to reinvent the wheel. We, we're very efficient. We like to recycle, very environmentally conscious in that sense. Uh, we like to recycle things. So things that are already used up for one thing get broken down and those components get recycled and used for other things. Now, the way our bodies like to build things up and break them down is through combinations of a series of basically two kinds of reactions. So we have one that's called dehydration synthesis. Well, you guys have heard the term dehydration. What a, you, know, you get dehydrated, like I just had the flu and got real dehydrated. What happens in dehydration? You've lost water, right? So that's basically what's going on in dehydration synthesis. You're losing water. And um, we're gonna take a look in more detail of exactly how that happens. Uh, some books will call dehydration synthesis condensation reactions. So think about when something, when you have a condensation happen, like for example, uh, you you know take a, a frozen mug out of your freezer and all that water kind of accumulates on the glass, condensation, right? So think that's another way to think about this, that you're removing water. Water is going to be deposited somewhere else. Um, so uh, we have dehydration synthesis reactions and hydrolysis reactions. So uh, what are the difference between these two? So let's take a look at these cute little diagrams here. So the first one is of a dehydration synthesis reaction. And so you have some kind of polymer, maybe it's a carbohydrate, maybe it's a protein, who knows? And it of course consists of its components, its monomers. And at the end of one of these is an OH, which is a hydroxyl group. So some of you who've been studying your functional groups, remember OH is a hydroxyl group. And you have some other compound here, and maybe it has a hydrogen at the end. Well, if I wanted to take this compound and add it to this compound to make a bigger, one big compound, we would have to take a water out. We'd have to dehydrate these molecules. 
And so I'm gonna take that OH from this side and the H from this side, well, H, two, O, boom. And so now I have removed a water molecule from these two compounds and thus, because I removed this hydroxyl and this hydrogen, that sticks these, these other little components together and boom, I now have a polymer, a great big molecule. So I've removed water to bond two monomers together to make a big, bigger compound called a polymer. Pretty easy, right? But this is the basis of how we make big compounds in our body. So it happens all through our metabolism. No matter what kind of organism you are, we do dehydration synthesis reactions to build things up. Now, what if we started with a big compound and we wanted to break it up? Well, then we're gonna actually stuff it with some water to break some bonds. And basically we're doing the reverse of what we just did, taking the water, squeezing it in there, breaking bonds, and boom, now you have two separate smaller molecules. So uh, how does this happen? So imagine this is your polymer right here. And let's say we wanted to separate this side from that side. We're gonna take a water molecule, bam, and just like before, we're taking a hydroxyl group off of the water and sticking it onto one side, and the remaining hydrogen gets stuck to the other side, and booyah, now you have two separate smaller molecules from that larger polymer molecule. Actually pretty easy, right? And think of the word hydrolysis. Hydro means water. Lysis means to break apart. So we're breaking apart water to break up a polymer into smaller molecules. Now, this doesn't just happen on its own. We have to have something to kind of speed this process up. And so um, you may have already learned that enzymes are things that like to speed up reactions. They serve as, some of them serve as catalysts, and that means that they speed up reactions. And so a lot of these reactions, whether you're talking about a dehydration synthesis reaction or a hydro hydrolysis reaction, we could stick a little enzyme right along this arrow and right along this arrow, and that means some specific enzyme is going to catalyze, means kind of speed up and allow this reaction to occur for us to get what we want out of it. Um, enzymes are proteins, and we'll be spending a lot more time later in this lecture talking about enzyme proteins because they are fascinating, and life on Earth could not have existed without them. So we love proteins, and uh, check out this enzyme protein right here. He's beautiful. Okay, so dehydration synthesis reaction, take two smaller molecules, take out the water, make a big molecule. And hydrolysis reactions, take a big molecule, stuff it with some hydrogen uh, um, dioxide of water uh, to break a bond and you get two smaller molecules from there. Cool, so that's how our life's reactions occur. Uh, here are a couple examples of what we just talked about with um, dehydration synthesis reactions. So um, check out this. So like that enzyme protein that you just saw, we're gonna be talking about how proteins are formed. And you'll learn that the components of proteins, the monomers called amino acids, are stuck together through a special bond called peptide bonds. And the way that you're gonna create proteins from smaller amino acid monomers is by sticking them together and through a dehydration synthesis reaction, removing a water uh, every time you wanna stick two of these guys together. So you can see, imagine here is an amino acid, here's an amino acid, here's an amino acid, here's an amino acid. Every time you wanna stick two of these little guys together, take a hydroxyl off one, a hydrogen off the other, H2O, boom, leaves, and now these guys are stuck together through what's called a peptide bond. Sounds complicated, but it's exactly what we just talked about. We're taking small little molecules, taking out water every time we wanna to stick two of them together, and we form a bond. So that's a dehydration or condensation reaction. Uh, over here, how do we get different kinds of large sugars? So for example, um, maltose is a sugar that's very important, actually, like if you make beer, you're gonna to wanna to know something about maltose, because malt, right? Um, mal maltose is what we call a disaccharide. We'll get into that in a minute. But it's made of taking two glucose molecules, which are kind of smallish rings, and sticking them together to make a double-sided sugar, a maltose, a disaccharide. Same thing, so if you look here, here's one glucose, C6H1206, right? You guys should remember that, that that particular formula because you'll hear it over and over again. So we take one glucose, 
we take another glucose, here comes an H off one, a hydroxyl off the other, so we form water as a byproduct, and here is a beautiful maltose sugar, which is tied together via a nice, what we call glycosidic bond, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and you're like, okay, maltose, you probably haven't spent too much time thinking about maltose, but what about sucrose? Sucrose is table sugar, it's kind of what you probably put in your coffee this morning, and same kind of thing, that guy is a disaccharide, has two sugars put together, um, and those two sugars were glucose and fructose, which is fruit sugar, right? And same thing, we want to take a hydroxyl off one, a hydrogen off the other, that makes these guys form a nice little bond with water formed as a byproduct. So that was the dehydration synthesis reaction. All right, uh, one quick example of hydrolysis. We're just going to work in the reverse. So instead of forming maltose in this example, we're going to start with maltose. And let's say we wanted to break it apart. Like, for example, you consume some beer that had maltose in it, and now your body's trying to digest it because we don't like to keep big sugars floating around in our body. You want to digest it to things that your cells can take up. So you start with maltose, add some water, boom, goes right through and breaks that bond. And now the hydroxyl from water goes on this guy. And here's from the other guy. And boom, you have two separate glucose molecules. So hydrolysis, breaking that water up to break the big compound up. Any questions?